Now, there was a late push in this hockey game by the Empton Oilers to tie this one up after Ryan Nugent Hopkins brought the Oilers within striking distance, but it was Eric Comrie standing up to the task almost all night long as he leads the Buffalo Sabres to a 4-2 victory on this night. Tony Barr here alongside former Empton Oilers netminder Joaquin Gage, and, and as a former netminder, maybe you can appreciate the night that Eric Comrie did more than the rest oh, of us. Oh, God, I appreciate it, Tony. i got to <laughs> give the goalies a little bit of love and uh, the main reason, probably the only reason that the Buffalo Sabres came out with two points tonight was the play of Mr. Comrie. Just masterful job. That third period was, uh, well, I'm... I'm going to say that was probably the best goaltending performance of this <laughs> of this season yeah. for sure. But uh, that feeling you get when, um, as a goalie, when you're such a big part of a victory, it's a uh, it's a feeling that when we stop playing, we miss a lot. <laughs> Definitely, uh, 46 of 48 shots was Comrie's stat line as he turned aside the first number in that category. Uh, again, leading the Buffalo Sabers to a two and one record. The Oilers falling to one and two, but. In saying that there was a late flurry by Edmonton and also saying that there was a better start for the Oilers means that there was a little bit of a lull period, as Ryan Nugent Hopkins mentioned post game. Yeah, and um, better first. We, we heard Coach Woodcroft talk about the first and he liked the, the, the way his team handled it. Nurse responding quickly after a goal against like that, but that three minute lull, you know, it's the NHL's a, a weird league where the players are so good, and if you just uh, a little lapse in concentration and the and the game can get away with you, from you. Um, third period, just a dominant performance by the Edmonton Oilers. It was, uh, again, because of Mr. Comrie. Uh, this is the only reason that uh, that they didn't win this game. They fall to one and two, but a lot to build on, especially in that third period. But you know the Oilers. They want to play a full 60 minutes, and they'll have to play a few full 60 minutes with the rest of the homestand that they have coming up as Carolina comes into town. Hey, you mentioned it. A lot of experts saying that it could be Edmonton and Carolina in the Stanley Cup final. It could be a rematch of 06, but the Oilers have their work cut out for them. Yeah, and I think I don't want to take anything away from the Buffalo Sabres, but they are the Buffalo Sabres, all right? So when you, when you do look at the calendar, I think of the Oilers, yes, you have to prepare for a young, good team, but I'm sure that it's a little bit different mindset going up against the Carolina Hurricane. Like we talked about before, this could be a possible, what people are saying, a possible Stanley Cup um, uh, playoff. So the next few games, we see some of the teams that are coming in here all playoff teams. Yeah. Uh, the Oilers know that they're going to have to bring their game to a proper level if they want to compete and win those hockey games. Carolina, St. Louis, and Pittsburgh on deck. But if we know Jay Woodcroft, and we do, he's not looking past tomorrow's practice. The Oilers lose 4-2 and fall to 1-2 here at Rogers Place.